Hello folks and welcome to Rome. I am here for a match day vlog, Roma versus Sassuolo. It doesn't actually happen until tomorrow as I'm recording this. As you can see, I'm already here in the city, soaking in some culture. You know me, very cultural guy. Why am I at a Roma match for a match day vlog, I hear you cry? My cry back to you would be, you should follow me on Twitch, not just here on YouTube, because if you'd have been watching along on Twitch, You'd have seen we did a save on Twitch earlier on in the year where I started in Turkey, managed three different teams in Ankara and then ended up at Roma where we won the Champions League. So we had to come to Rome. It basically was an excuse to come to Rome. It's quite a fancy city. It's full of fancy buildings like this. The reason I am out and about the day before the match though is because the last time I was in Italy for a match day vlog, when I came to Juventus last year, I passed up the opportunity to go to a proper club shop on video before we got to the match and then when we got to the match I couldn't find a club shop at the ground. I don't know if that's maybe the Italian way of things. I was wandering up and down this street last night near where my hotel is and saw the official Roma fan shop. So I figured this time rather than just having a little look at it and then not being able to include it in the video I'll go and video it properly now and then if we find another one at the ground tomorrow we get double club shop experience but this way at the very least we get to see what's on offer in the club shop specifically looking for any tammy abraham merchandise there are these little shops all over the city that sell little models of various footballers um, i found a romelu lukaku action figure which i hope i took a picture of if i have i'll overlay that now but i haven't found a tammy abraham yet i don't understand Tammy is my boy. I can't believe there's not Tammy Abraham merch every, everywhere, but hopefully if I'm gonna find it anywhere, it's gonna be in this club shop up here. I don't need a shirt. I already have one, of course, with Tammy's name and number on, but maybe a scarf, maybe a hoodie, because I've come here as a typical British person, assuming that I don't need a coat or anything like that because it's Italy, it's got to be hot. It isn't too bad, but everyone else is wearing jackets, so. Maybe a Roma hoodie if we can find one, but the shop is just up here. I'll meet you in there. And there it is behind me now. Let's go in and have a little rummage. So we've got lots of uh, Roma paraphernalia on all of the walls around us. And here we have a selection of goodies that we might find in here, including a suitcase. I could get myself a new suitcase to bring all of my Tammy merch home with me. A play oh, it's a PS5 controller skin. I thought that was an actual controller. I might have bought a controller. Roma flip-flops, anybody? Various key rings and shot glasses and maybe a jacket is the thing that I need. Let's go and have a little rummage down here. So this is very cool. We've got these uh, very snazzy pictures on the walls. And then there is lots of goodies in here. Ashtray, anybody? See, that's what I want. I want that, but with Tammy Abraham. We shall see. They've got these jackets, which are quite snazzy. I do quite like a jacket. We've got a whole section in here with like classic shirts. That jacket is cool. I really like that one. Do they have these in full-size human sizes, do we think? That's the question. I mean, I have lost a little bit of weight recently, but am I gonna squeeze into one of those? We might have to try that on, I like that a lot. Lots and lots of various other shirts, including lots of totty ones. Hoodies, hoodie would be the other option, I guess. Keep me warm at the match, that is not, I mean, that's a rain jacket, I think, that is much more expensive than the one over there that I prefer, I think. So I think we're looking at the other one at the moment. They have a dog cushion. Shall I get Dave a dog cushion? That's amazing. Am I going to fit that in my case to get it home? There's the flip-flops from before, towels, pillows. You name it, they've got it with a Roma badge on. That is quite the array of flip-flops. I mean, I am going on holiday in a couple of months. Should I get myself some Roma flip-flops to wear by the pool? Or slippers, if I don't want to go full flip-flop. Maybe we could go slippers. And then we have what could only be described as the room of hats and scarves. So we do have a lot of caps. 
bucket hats. Caps are usually too small on my giant head. But we've got some woolly hats, including that rather fetching number. Turn up at the football in one of those. All of the scarves you could ever want. Flags. And then more scarves over here. There's loads. This is a huge shop. We have mugs and key rings and general merchandise pieces, including. Is that just a rock? Original reproduction of a Roman cobblestone with a Roma badge on it. They've got. Oh, they do actually have. They've got PS4 actual controllers there, or PS5 controller skins. And then we've got, this is the kids' stuff, I think, in here. Clocks and watches in that one. So much stuff in here. These are all the, uh, the kids' bits, including some very, very small kids' bits. And then I can get a Chris Smalling shirt. Now you're talking. So current replica shirts in here. Sure, got to be the got to be the home one, surely. Yeah, exactly. You can even get an Italy shirt in here. More hoodies and various other merch bags and bits and bobs and Italy things. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm determined to find a shirt with uh, with Abraham on the back. So many Smalling shirts. I can't fathom why all the Chris Smalling shirts are still in stock. One of the stars of the Twitch save, he has his shirt in here. Lukaku. I don't think we're gonna get a Tammy shirt. Luckily, I already have one. I brought one with me. I was prepared. Are these all? I oh know, I thought they were all Dabala there. Not even got names on most of them. Right, I think I need to make a purchase. Purchase is made, cap and scarf, both of which I'm sure you'll see a little bit later in the video. Also got myself a little pin for my pin collection. I'm gonna let you guess what a Roma badge pin might look like, because I can't be bothered to get it out of the lovely little bag he's wrapped it up in. Right, I'm now off to go and enjoy a day of culture and sunshine. If you want to see what I got up to doing that, this is what my vlog channel is for. I'll link to that down in the description below. But for you lot, we'll now jump forward probably about 24 hours and we'll be on our way to the match. And there we are then folks, just over 24 hours later. And we have made it to the Stadio Olimpico. As you can see, I am fully kitted out in all the gear that I bought in the shop and uh, it's football party atmosphere. On the way in, we've just come over that bridge. There's just flags, scarves, shirts, you name it. It's for sale over there. And then if we come just over here, you can see just the other side of this gate, we have the stadium ready for action. Now, I have bought my ticket in advance, obviously. I'm not mad. It's actually the first time on one of these trips I've just been able to buy it directly from the club. I've not used any kind of football tour website or anything like that. I've done it the cheap way, mainly because I did it early and tickets were still available. So I have just got my ticket directly from the club. The match is actually kicking off a little bit later than I thought. I'm glad I checked my emails last night. I had an email from the club saying, by the way, this is a six o'clock kickoff. It says three o'clock kickoff on your ticket. It was all in Italian good old Google Translate. Um, I imagine I would have figured it out eventually if I'd have turned up here for three o'clock and there was no one else here. Well, to be fair, it's almost four o'clock now and I mean, it's two hours till kickoff and it's pretty busy. So I imagine if I'd have got here for three, it already would have been starting to get busy, but I need to work out where I go in. The stadium's quite a long way that way. I don't know what gate I'm going through or anything. So I've got about two hours to try and figure out my way in. I don't think there's a club shop here at the stadium because obviously they share the stadium with Lazio. So I suspect it's a good job I went to the club shop yesterday and got myself kitted out. Let's face it, I already look like Roma have vomited all over me. So there's not much more I can do to make myself look the part. So I think I am gonna attempt to do a lap of the stadium and work out where I go in. Right, I've managed to establish from my ticket that I'm going in the, uh, the north entrance and this is the southeast entrance. So I guess 
I do have to go around and do a complete lap. I remember doing this last year when I came to Juventus. We basically just did a full lap of the entire stadium and it turned out that if I'd have just gone the opposite way at the start of the lap, I wouldn't have had to have walked very far at all. In, in a work of complete guesswork, I've decided to go this way round. It's probably just a little bit further up there, isn't it? Well, I've made it round to the east side. So presumably just a little bit further and we're on the north. Worth noting as well, there's loads of spaces in this car park. If you want to come by car, easy park here a couple of hours before kickoff. How often do you get that in England? All these sculptures around the side. It couldn't get much more Roman, could it? My word. Got to be the classiest football stadium I've ever been to. They all seem to have various pieces of sporting equipment as well, I guess, because this was the Olympic Stadium. Guy there with a tennis racket, all sorts of things. So I guess that's some kind of Olympics tribute thing. Looks like there's a massive cricket ball over there, which I assume it's not. Don't, don't think Italy is a particularly, uh, <laughs> a particularly passionate cricketing nation. But yeah, we've got a whole little, uh, whole little thing here. I don't know what the thing is, but it's definitely there. Right, so we've now got the northeast gate there. So I guess I'm just a little bit further around. If I get too far and find the northwest gate, I guess I go in that. My ticket just says north. So probably just a little bit further. Turns out my theory was not a very good theory. Got to the last gate you can get to in this direction. It's not labeled, I assumed it would be the north lady on the gate. No, north is way around the other side. So we're going all the way around the other side, presumably to get to just there. But as you can see, the road goes off up there now and you can't get around that bit. So I'm doing another lap, this time in the opposite direction. <laughs> this is why I get to matches two hours early. Well, I decided just off the off chance to try the next gate and I'm glad I did because I got in on the next one. I've had my passport and ID checked. So bear that in mind if you want to come to a game in Italy. It was the same when I went to Juventus. You do have to have photo ID where the name matches the name on your ticket. Bought the ticket direct from the club, no problem. Been, frisked, been searched, they've checked the camera. They're happy for me to bring it in. So I guess I don't need to keep it hidden like I sometimes have to on my way into football matches. But I think I go in over here, gate 42, which is just up here behind me. Well, I just got frisked again, passport checked again. And I thought they were gonna take my battery pack and my little uh, mini camera tripod off me which would have been very upsetting. So I am hiding the camera again for a moment. I've switched to the phone, so audio might be a bit rough until I get away from where all the frisky stewards are. There you go, we are in and I have found my seat. And now I remember the thought process I went through when I was booking, because I remembered how there was no leg room when I went to Barcelona last year. And I wanted to avoid that happening. So I've got this seat right in the back of this row in what I guess is would be considered the middle tier. It's kind of a bowl and just goes all the way up, but there's these barrier bits behind me. So there's a bit of separation between me and the row behind. But in front of me is just the staircase. There, are, there is nobody in front of me. So I can uh, properly get my feet out and relax. Obviously, if I get particularly excited leaping forward, celebrating a goal, there's nothing to stop me tumbling all the way down there. But it has the double benefit here of obviously gives me the leg room, but also because there's not a row immediately behind me, I'll feel less uncomfortable about pulling the camera out and having people making funny faces in the background as well. So we are in. I did do a couple of shots on my phone, but now we're on the proper camera again. Let's have a little look around the ground. So we are in this corner here behind this goal. I've never watched a football match from the side, but behind the level of the pitch before. Obviously, with it having the running track around, there is that separation between the, the pitch and the fans. So it's a weird angle that I've never watched football from before, but decent spot and very, very happy to have all of the leg room and be in a, a perfect spot for filming. The only spot that could have been better, and even this wouldn't have been better without them making some structural changes to the stadium. But if I could have been right up against that wall with a staircase in front of me for the leg room, that would have been ideal. And to be honest, looking at it, there's plenty of leg room here anyway, so it wouldn't have been a problem. The reason it was a problem at Barcelona is because as well as the seats, they had this like metal barrier that was that little bit higher. And it was that that was banging into my knees. With this, it would be fine anyway. So I could have gone down in that corner, but, I don't want to make the Barcelona mistake again. 
So now we just wait till kickoff. Got some traditional Italian pre-match food. Hot dog, but no mustard. They didn't have mustard. So I think that's what makes it traditional and Italian. Well, that was as bland as you'd expect a hot dog with no mustard to taste. Five euros for that, eight in total for that, and a Sprite. Good to know that football fans get ripped off just the same all over the world. Did notice as well, and just didn't get it because I wasn't after it. I was too afraid to ask for it. Even though everybody here speaks English. I've heard more people speak English across Rome as a city than Italian. But just to be on the safe side of it, something I'm not confident of asking for in Italian, then I'll just go for the stuff like hot dog and Sprite. They're universal words. But they had things like, they had an espresso machine at the football. They had a panini press. They had multiple different flavors of paninis. The food on, on the whole looked better than what we'd get at home. I guess they have the, a few hot dogs in there just for the tourists who are too afraid to attempt to ask for a prosciutto and mozzarella panini and a double espresso. I.e. me. It seems to have been a banner that's appeared behind me. They're doing the team news now. At the moment, they're the Sassuolo team. Now it's the Roma team. Tommy Abraham is on the bench. That's why he couldn't meet me for pizza. Tammy's on the bench. I don't know if you even heard my screaming before. From what I can gather, Tammy Abraham is on the bench. He was certainly announced as part of the, the team lineups, but I have no signal in here at all now, so I don't know for sure. But I think he is. I love more than an Italian football pre-match sing-song. intimidating to play in front of but it is loud in here i keep getting loud environment notifications from my watch which is always a good sign 20 minutes in there's been a couple of goodish chances for roma the best one still fell to lukaku the crowd crowd are just starting to quieten down a little bit and a couple of little grumbles and groans of frustration starting to settle in and as i say that they start singing again but there's been a couple of instances of getting in good possession good positions and just giving the ball away the crowd are now trying to fire them back up again i say 20 minutes in bring tammy on as an englishman this is fascinating not just the fact that you can have beer inside the pitch but there's literally a beer guy who wanders around bringing beers to people the Premier League could never. The whistling noise, by the way, this is the first corner of the game, and it's Sassuolo who've got the corner. I realise I'm saying their name wrong. I was told it constantly when I was managing Roma on Twitch, but I never did learn to say it right. I think it's been cleared. We're good. The beer guy's still there. That was about the fourth beer he's poured. Just sat there pouring beers for people. Just over half an hour gone. There really isn't very much happening at all. There was a soft drinks and crisp guy who came round shortly after the, the beer guy. 
And that's pretty much the highlights of the first half, although there is a Roma attack going on here. They've just made it into the penalty area. Everyone around me is getting very excited. Cross comes in, but it's cleared relatively comfortably. But that livened everyone up again a little bit. The plan definitely seems to be get the ball out wide to the wing backs and cross in for Lukaku in the middle. They've tried it four or five times now. The only time he's actually connected with it was that one really early on chance. It's still nil-nil. We're probably with it with stoppages, and there's been a lot. Italian football has spent a lot of time rolling around on the floor. We've probably got at least another 15 minutes left in this first half, so still hopeful we might see a goal at this end. They're shooting this way at the moment. Otherwise, I'll need my binoculars to see the other end of the pitch. I've got to see more than a pitch length away to see stuff that's going on in the opposite penalty area, which frankly, in this first half, has been absolutely nothing at all. I don't know how well the camera's picking them up, but there's loads of seagulls <laughs> circling around the top of the stadium. They occasionally duck down and come in here and have a look. Presumably because it's usually quite good pickings for uh, leftovers lying around in here, I guess. They're waiting for us all to leave. And that's my summary of how the last 10 minutes of the match have gone. Maybe five minutes till we're out of time. I'd like something to happen soon. Right, there's a Roma free kick on the far side in a pretty good position, probably 30 yards back and right over by the, the touchline. But decent crossing position. If they can get this one in the right areas, they've got the big men forward from the back as well. This might be the opportunity for a just before half time goal right here in front of me, which would be very, very welcome. Oh, it was a free header at the far post, but straight at the goalkeeper. And it is a Roma corner now from this near side. This little bit of just before half time pressure continues and you can hear that it's lifted the crowd now would be a jolly nice time for a goal please it was not to be although the move potentially continues back out on this right side again cross comes in the car moves there and he's missed another centre he and Romelu Lukaku has had two free headers inside the six yard box in this first half one early on, one just now. He's gone either side of the post on both of them. It should be 2-0 Roma and he should have two goals. I mean, no personal bias from me. Tammy would have got two. And that is half time, so I don't get to see a goal down here in front of me. Fingers crossed. We see a goal somewhere at some point in the second half though, because, yeah. I've spent all day wandering around the city complaining about how hot it was in shirt sleeves. The sun only went down an hour ago. It has turned cold in here. I'm having to wear my scarf like a real scarf. And I'm kind of wishing I'd bought one of those jackets that I saw in the club shop yesterday, even though they were a little bit too small. It would fit very, very nicely underneath my coat around about now. It is weirdly, according to my watch, 16 degrees still. Yet earlier today, it was only 18 degrees. I think my Apple Watch is messing with me, unless just having the sunlight on your skin adds like 10 degrees to how it actually feels. I need to move. I need to jump up and down and celebrate a goal in this second half. I know some of you who are used to my match day vlogs as well might be expecting half-time program analysis. A, haven't been able to find a program, don't even know they're a thing in Italy. And B, even if I could, don't speak any Italian, it'd be useless anyway. So instead of program news, you got Kev's a little chilly and the seagulls slash pigeons are still swarming. Here we go then, second half underway, obviously still nil-nil. May have mentioned that, a couple of other observations about just Italian football in general. There's still fences all the way around the pitch. As you can see down there, look, not next to the pitch where the, uh, where the racetrack is, but as you get to the bottom of the stands, it's, there's fences all the way around. And also, fans can still smoke in here as well. Those two things combined reminds me of when I first started going to football in 1991. I don't think you've been able to do either of those. You've certainly not been able to smoke in English football grounds since the smoking ban, which must be, what, 20 years ago now? 
and the fences came down in the mid 90s, I think. I don't remember them being up very long. And that is 1-0 right at the start of the second half, maybe five minutes in. It's a lovely, I think it's Pellegrini who scored it. He's just kind of picked it up on the edge of the area, took it past the man and curled it round the goalkeeper from at least 20 yards out. What a goal! That's why we've been up a little bit. Lukaku should have had a hat trick. He was just still on goal and somehow didn't even force a save out of the goalkeeper. He has had an absolute mare today. Get Tammy on. Well, Lukaku's gone off. Tammy has come on. Heartbroken. So well, we are just about done. Worth noting, those flags have not stopped the entire match. They are just flagging all over the place the whole time. Quite impressive sight. And that is that. A 1-0 win. Absolutely should have been more. Like I say, Lukaku had a terrible Roma game. Avito. But a win is a win. And that was that, boys and girls. Now I have to uh, hope that they're... I mean, if I learned anything from Barcelona and Juventus last year, it's that getting a taxi after these big European matches is close to impossible. And just like those stadiums, public transport nearby is kind of non-existent. So I think I've got an hour's walk back to my hotel now. So luckily I'm wrapped up warm. And let's face it, there are, there are less pleasant cities that I could wander about for an hour on a Sunday evening. So. Hopefully I'll find some pizza or something on the way back. That would be very nice, but another great experience. Love these, uh, love these European trips. And obviously, as part of these videos, have to thank you all for making them possible. If it wasn't for you watching the Twitch streams, watching the YouTube videos, watching the Lujo 2, and cheering me on while I manage these teams on Football Manager, I'd never get the opportunity to make these trips. So big thank you for that. If you have enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a nice big thumbs up for me. We have got another match day vlog coming up very soon as well. As soon as I get back from Rome, I literally wash my clothes, repack my suitcase and head to Scotland. So in a few days time, you'll have another match day vlog from East Fife, my current Twitch team. And I promise I am still trying to sort tickets for Dortmund as well. So this is not the end for match day vlogs this season. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Maybe check out some of the Football Manager stuff while you're here. And thank you very much for watching.